All right, good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. Today is Monday, April 3rd, 2018. <clears throat> and uh, we're just waiting for a few other people to join. So we're gonna cover some other things on our meeting tonight first. Um, we'll do part of our open comment section first. How about that? I understand Bob has something he wants to say for comment night. Uh, yeah, regarding the town meeting on Friday night, I would just like to thank everybody for their efforts and really making a special evening for me. I really appreciated it. And one of the things that makes town meeting run so effectively is the work that you guys have put in as long as I've been moderator. And the town administrators, Margaret and now Sherry, the amount of work that they put in uh, is also quite significant. And if people would attend town, the select board meetings, or at least watch it on TV, they would gain an appreciation for the amount of effort that it takes to really put on a good town meeting. <clears throat> I don't think I can remember a time when you guys have been on the board that there hasn't been a question that you folks haven't been able to answer. And that really makes all the difference in the world. And <clears throat> Wendy's efforts in terms of town clerk and Cindy Bennett in terms of assisting in the preparation for the meetings is really what makes town meeting go. And I don't care who is moderator, without your input, town meeting isn't going to work. So I'd like to thank you for, for the evening, but also for the amount of work that you guys put in terms of making town meetings successful. So thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. You're here. You're here. <coughs> and it's one of those things you don't you don't see at all. You know, the meeting is over pretty quickly compared to all the work that goes in starting back in December yeah. so we uh, Exactly. I mean, okay, quick. I'll put that in your quotes, right? <laughs> I mean, by the time we get to the end we're you know, people are just like, okay. Uh, but yeah. But there's always one article that you don't know which one it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mystery one, the one that you never suspect will garner discussion, and there it is. You know? Yeah, that's true. For, for a number of years, my youngest son described town meeting as a fickle, fickle creature. <laughs> Just, you don't know. That's a good way to describe it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for all your years, Bob. We appreciate it. So you'd be sitting there waving to us from the from the stands next year. <laughs> you'd be holding up holding up Three. cards. <laughs> Not that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. Seven. <laughs> uh, well, thanks, Bob. No more budget hearings for you. No more warrants. You can still come. No more reviews. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that, was, that was almost a sinister <laughs> yeah. smile too, right there. <laughs> signs to put on the side of the road. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> Only if you can afford the paint. <laughs> glad, glad you got that standing count in. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a little duct tape goes a long way. You know? <laughs> Just change them one way or the other. Brilliant. All right, thanks, Bob. Um, since all of you guys are here now, why don't we... Um, do you want to go back to, you guys make a, you guys a quorum now, right? You're missing yeah. one? Yeah, great. We can go back to our original 6.30 topic. You want to start with your um, so, presentation oh, back? Up to you. Sure. Do you check around? Sure. Great. Yeah. I'm thinking we have, we have a contract to sign as well, right? Yep. So you're going to start with both of these in this order? You, if you want to do the contract, you guys want to see. Also. You guys want to see the yeah. presentation. Wait through the presentation on the parking, yeah. and then do the contract. They're two totally different things. So okay. Yeah. Whatever you want to do, it's up to all of you. I'd like to be aware of what's going on the parking. Great. Let's do it. Okay. Right. Let it rip, man. Okay. Um, can everyone see the PowerPoint presentation? Is it? And we can drop that first row of lights. Yeah. Let's do that. <clears> just so it's a little bit yeah. clearer. And then uh, probably a quick intro. This is Ben Barshavsky, the principal, in case anybody doesn't know, of our elementary school. Hello, everyone. Uh -huh. I That's one of the two I was going to get. <clears throat> Looks good. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for having me tonight. And I wanted to just go over briefly a few of the parking lot safety concerns at Sunderland Elementary School. 
Um, the purpose of the meeting is to identify the current safety measures that are already being implemented. Um, also identify some pressing issues and concerns and then try to develop somewhat of a tentative plan for moving forward. Um, current safety message, uh, measures. We send messages to families throughout the year um, about safe parking lot practices. Um, at the beginning of this year, our Sunderland Police Department offered parking slip reminders. Um, and those, the, the thank you and the uh oh are featured up on yeah. the, uh, up on the PowerPoint presentation there. And that, that was mainly for the location in front of our flagpole, which is meant to be drop off only in the morning. Um, what happens at times we find vehicles uh, parking there and both adult and student are getting out of the vehicle. The vehicle is staying in one spot for five, 10 minutes while they travel <coughs> to school. And that kind of creates a log jam in that area. Um, and then also uh, we've had an active Sunderland Police Department presence in the morning on many mornings during the school year. And as you can see, Chief Dimitropoulos, let me put a picture of him yeah. up there in the uh, <laughs> presentation. I realize Lego commissioned a Lego thing. <laughs> Um, other safety measures being implemented, implemented, and it's tough to see um, on the screen right now, but in the, in the morning and in the afternoon, these, we have two cones stationed uh, located in this spot here to really um, let vehicles know that that is the bus lane only. So only a bu buses are allowed in this fire lane in front of the school. The second area where we've put three cones, cones up are, are these three right here. And that only takes place in the afternoon. With our current dismissal setup, students in grades one through six are stationed in this area. That's for students who are picked up by their parents each day. And we placed these cones here so that cars would not be traveling through this area in either direction. So with this one lane roadway, these cones block off the one lane roadway um, to the main staff area in the parking lot. And then also both at arrival and dismissal time, we staff appropriately. We look to have a staff member stationed outside by the flagpole at, arri at arrival time. We have another staff member by the crosswalk that leads into the front of the school. And then we have another staff member at, at the front door. Um, and then at dismissal time, classroom teachers walk out their students. We have uh, dismissal duty for certain staff members as well that are stationed um, out in front of the library where the grade one through six students are. Um, some pressing issues, lack of available parking spaces, and this is really only in the afternoon. It's, it's really not an issue in the morning. What we find in the morning, parents start dropping their students off around 8.15, and morning arrival time really spans about half an hour. Um, so the number of cars that are coming into the parking lot over those 30 minutes, it's, it's really a non-issue. Um, in the afternoon, you know, we have in the main staff parking lot around 15 available spaces, 15 total, plus another 10, the 10 spaces that run um, perpendicular to the flagpole. And if you'll, I'll go back to this screen right here. We have 10 spaces, yeah, on the opposite side of the flagpole and then another five um, right in front of the flagpole. You know, in the afternoon, the where the air, the space is in front of the flagpole, that's not really an issue to park there. We don't need temporary parking in that spot um, because parents usually aren't going into the building at that time. Um, and so with the 25 to 30 available parking spaces at the end of the day, we're finding um, cars parked on curbs, on the sidewalk and other made up spaces just because there's, there's a lack of space. The difference between morning and afternoon in the morning, it's a, it's a drop and go. And, and instead in the afternoon, parents have to park their car, physically get out of their vehicle, come meet their student in front of the flag, um, in front of the library, and then walk their kid back to the car. Now, we have 237 students in our <coughs> school. 
um, on a, any given day, 100 to 120 or so ride the bus ride, uh, ride the bus home. The other half need to get home somehow. Um, and so some days we have more than half of our student body being picked up at the end of the day. Now, each day varies a little bit. We have our out of school time program. We have absences each day, but there's a significant uh, increase of vehicles in our parking lot, to say the least, at the end of the day. Um, another pressing need is uh, uh, increased signage and line painting. The crosswalk that is located um, right by Merritt Field <coughs> right now does not have a um, pedestrian crosswalk signs. Um, so, and I'll get to it a little bit about some recommendations. Um, we, when I met with Mass DOT at the end of March, they recommended um, painting some traffic flow directional arrows um, because, because at times we still see some cars go the wrong way in the roundabout. Um, adding one or two pedestrian crosswalks. <coughs> and then one of the next few slides, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, but then also there's a need for replacement and worn out signs and posts. Over the years, signs have faded. Um, signs have periodically been hit by plows and so they're, so they're bent out of shape and, and need to be replaced. And also, um, and like I said, this is the vehicle's parking in space is parallel to the flagpole. That's an issue in the morning. <coughs> really done a pretty good job handling that. I know in the past there's been some recommendations um, about repainting that area of the spaces in front of the flagpole. Yep. I'm not, or uh, yeah, I'm personally not prepared to recommend that yet. Um, when we, I'm gonna ask that I come back at a later date after I meet with other stakeholders and we'll come up with a list of, of recommendations. This is more of just a, an information and putting it out there. And then uh, at night, um, parking lot lighting during the evening, evening events. There seems to be plenty of uh, lamp posts in the parking lot, but sometimes they don't light up. Um, and I, I believe uh, they're on sensors. And for some reason, you know, so sometimes they work, sometimes they do not. So those are some of the pressing issues. When I met with Mass DOT, um, they, we talked mainly about the afternoon pickup time. And they recommended putting in these uh, double-sided pedestrian crosswalk signs at this crosswalk right here. They recommended the directional arrows that you see there as well. And then if you, you'll notice, in the spaces that run perpendicular to the flagpole in this area right here, we have a sidewalk, but then in either direction, there's no crosswalk to um, allow the pedestrians to um, walk to other sidewalks, okay? Um, so what we're finding is, and this is early childhood parking as well, that parents are parking here, and now they're going directly towards the school, cutting in front of cars. Um, so it's a, it's a dangerous situation. You'll also notice in this that um, Mass DOT, and this is not their recommendation, they just said, hey, this is something to think about, this is an option. They, they talked about having a, um, a wait, um, a stop line right here where the car is looking to pick up their students or drop off their students, um, form a line, and then when a space opens up in front of the flagpole, that they pull up and become the next car in line there. They also recommended a pull-through lane where buses coming in would go past these vehicles and go into the front of the school. Or if someone wanted to park in these early childhood spots here, go, pa go past these other vehicles and, and pull in going to their left. Um, that, I, I'm not sure honestly if that is realistic uh, with the amount of space that we have, have in that area. There, there would be enough, the, the width would be fine, yeah. but the turning the, yeah just the amount of space in this little area here if we want five or six vehicles to wait to pull in here then that's going to create a log jam um in that area yeah keep i can tell you what's going to happen the, the cars on the right are not going to wait to pull into five spots they don't pull into any early childhood open 
and I think any spot you can go to. Yeah, sure, okay. yes, and yeah, I, I mean, there's there's many different scenarios about what could happen. What's interesting, from, from this spot here to um, Old Amherst Road is just over 1,000 feet, and according to Mass DOT, um, 25 feet per vehicle, so that's about 40 vehicles um, from that line back. And if in the afternoon, if we were to implement a method like that, you know, we'd be, we could be causing a log jam up on Old Amherst Road. Um, and uh, a couple months ago, a group of parents sent me this layout as well. Um, some similar recommendations um, on the right-hand side of Swampfield Drive, or the east side of Swampfield Drive. They uh, propose a possible additional parking lot area there, and I know way back... Um, you're going to have a parking new parking lot because of a half an hour problem. I, I'm, I'm, this is not not what I'm okay. recommending. I'm just saying there's we're looking at a bunch of different right. options have been have been talk, talked about. Um, and let's see here. And then other recommendations. Uh, they had similar recommendations about a pull through lane um, as as well. And the area in front of the flagpole possibly having that. Um, rope, not roped off, but traffic cones to really mark just a pull through lane in that area. And that's, and that's the slideshow. Um, so uh, ultimately, um, and there's, there's been many conversations about this uh, since I started at, at, at Sunderland. Um, you know, we are going to set up another meeting with school personnel both involve both fire, um, the fire chief, the police chief, and hope to come back to the select board with a, um, a good set of recommendations. Something I think really needs to be figured out with dismissal time. Um, and we've been doing some research on other surrounding schools about what they do. And ultimately, we, based on the current structure that we have, we want to propose something to the town, to the parents that costs no money at all. And just look at the current setup. Sure. Change and, the times. Um, and exactly, it might change the flow, change the flow one way. Um, one thing that was recommended um, is that at dismissal time, you might look to place the students who are being picked up around the flat, um, picked up in the afternoon in the area by the flagpole mm -hmm. and kind of have a moving pickup in that area. Um, but then our concern is during winter months. Right, right, um, and with it's lack of space. Snow. Yeah. yeah, so, and, and, there's, and there's other factors that, you know, you, know, you could well, be a little worried about that as well. Because they kind of pour out the different grades a little bit staggered and so if you've already got like a bunch of people in here who are for a classroom that's still inside and the people here who are like seeing their kids standing right. there and right. starting right. The Safe Routes to School has come out with some great documents. Nice. And um, one recommendation that they've come up with is staggering sure. dismissal time, staggering South pickup the, time. Southwest does it pretty well, right? Yeah. yeah. You're, you're zone C this year. Right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> And so that might look like students in, in K through three are picked up at three o'clock and students in four through six are picked up at 305. But if there's siblings in a, a little both, you would be picked up first, so, something like that. Um, Can you go back one slide, Ben? Sure. Thanks. Just blow that right back yeah. up. I know that's been an issue for, for a while because my kids have been out of there for a couple of years, but it was an issue way back when my kids were there too so so it wasn't that long ago that the paving and the crosswalks leaving the by the flagpole the diagonal sidewalks uh didn't exist that mm -hmm. was just grass yeah and and so what 2008 tom mm -hmm. 2008 we did that mm. seven maybe, or eight maybe six. Six, 2006 or seven. I've been doing this too long, so it's in that yeah. range. <laughs> so what, what we find in the afternoon is that um, cars are parked in the grass area all yep. along here. Yep. All of the spaces are full. And then also, this sidewalk here 
we have about 15 cars yeah, parked on that side right. of Lockton. Just fills and it right up. There's, there's no spaces. Right. So I'm not really sure what the uh, what the other uh, alternative is. No. I was just pointing out the historical context mm -hmm. that again that was all grass, no crosswalks. It was the ring parking lot, the but the drop off, the tie back here, and that was it. I think even when so without this, we outgrew the changes. Well, that's yeah, and even with this, I think it it wasn't designed for the volume of people getting mm -hmm. dropped off and picked up by parents as opposed Cars. to buses. Bingo. And, and Which, that's. That's something that has changed a lot over the years. It certainly has. And, and remember, a few years back, Sunderland had three buses. Yeah. It was three for the elementary. Three, yeah. three for the elementary. Right. So we, we have 41 school choice students. Mm -hmm. We have t around 25 early childhood preschool students. Yeah. Preschool students do not take the bus. Right. So you're at 65 there. And then... You know, there's a lot of other families who drop off. So are the preschools are the preschool students um, under a mandated amount of time that they need to be in class? So could you let the preschool students out 15 minutes early and get rid of them? I'm, I'm not I'm not sure what the exact uh, in, in, in clear, in, guidelines are. Yeah, you know that's a good thought too, though. And, and I mean I mean in clear that. And, and and you know from back back when when Scott and we 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 first talked about it, I think you know problem is that you don't, you know we didn't have school choice when it was designed, but I didn't think we had the staffing that we did when it was designed, because um, to find out that we only have fifteen or twenty spots available, that's that's the that's the limiting factor. Well, that whole, so that what, whole other options, so what, what other options are available right. for staff parking? Right. Is there staff parking that could be part of the conversation as well? Good point. Yeah. That, that, yeah. that, that should be on the table also. Mm -hmm. yep. Interesting. Hmm. I would say in terms of staggering time as well, it, it wouldn't be that long. I think it would be a matter of five to ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Because I used to wait until 3.05 to go there because it was a mess at 3. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And by about 3.05, it was all cleared out, and I could just basically just pull up. Oh, oh the dismissal time, it, it goes very quickly. But, you know, we're... There's some chaos. It's, 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 there's, it there's some con yeah. controlled chaos, yeah. you know, and, and we're having, um, you know, parents walk their kids back to the car, and they're kind of weaving in and out of other cars at the time. You know, I so see. that's... Yeah, so are, are you so are you looking for I, I mean maybe maybe one option is to take your staff and make the staff has to park on your line that you have on the coming in maybe they have to park there maybe that opens up that yeah, that whole parking lot or you have to look at ways of not having people park and keep them moving through, keep them cycling through. Right. I, I'm, I mean, that that's the hard part. I mean, you know, we're, we're, you're going to look at it different. You have to have a, a few different ideas instead of the status quo. You know, we, we need to look at it a little differently. I totally agree. And, and maybe there is a solution. Because you're right, Scott, when we did, we, we used to have the parallel, I mean, the... Uh, the nose in spots mm -hmm. um, along the flagpole, and that 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 was problematic because people never m yep. moved out of there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, even at that, that was continuous green when we first the first time around. One well, you cut down. One well, you cut down know. spaces by by putting in the parallel. They, we cut down by, spaces by cutting mm -hmm. the parallel. But it 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 allowed for. The drop, vehicles to, to keep moving, right? Right. Because exactly. you widen that area, yeah. right? And um, one or two school years ago, maybe actually two or three school years ago, Deerfield Elementary School, on the west side of their building, they kind of put in a, a moving drop off. Yeah. Um, and I'm not um, recommending that be done here, like you know, cutting cutting to the grass. Um, but 
if, if we could somehow implement that with our with the current layout, you know, I, it'd be interesting to see how, how that would work. Um, and, and like Keith, you had just mentioned, staggering <coughs> dismissal times by five minutes. Um, it's, it might be something we try for a week sometime this spring and communicate that to parents and, and see how it goes. But like I said, we're, um, we're, we're going to try to implement a few different things and also <coughs> come back with some recommendations regarding signs and yeah. paint, line painting. <coughs> So the sign, signage and line painting you expect to have done after the school year, or you want to have them done sometime in the spring? And those seems to be those m measures seem to be pretty low hanging fruit. Mm. I and mean, signage is a recommendation. Well, and, and I'm thinking like the we have to replace all of our signage in town to those new reflectivity standards by a certain we, as point. As we have been, yeah. So maybe some of those are up, mm -hmm. due for upgrade anyway. Mm -hmm. Has George seen this, or be talking about it? Uh, uh, no, I met. I went with um, George over the summer, okay. and he did remove some of the old signs. We yeah, had some sign. Yeah. We had some posts with no signs on them yeah, at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's still a few others that are uh, bent out of shape. And uh, they do every prior to every school year. They do a great job um, painting the existing. Crosswalks, recreating them. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they do a great job at that. Wear, uh, with, uh, yeah. This isn't wide enough. I'm just guessing for spots. No. I don't think it is. No, yeah. and that that's currently this. Which is why people pull up on the, on the grass, right? Yeah. And that's currently the sidewalk. And at times, the buses have not been able to get through because we've had cars park on each side. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and this reminds me, like, Frontier's got basically the same problem there, too, with drop-off and pick-up. And then when the buses are in there, nobody can get in, and that backs traffic up onto the main road. And so it's <laughs> it's definitely a, a general problem. Which I, I think <clears throat> is probably consistent at a, at a lot of schools with sure. just yep. the volume of traffic that comes in in <clears throat> such a short time window. And, you know, Keith, you work in a school as well, and so I'm wondering... There might be similar issues. They're kind of wrestling with it at Amherst High School too. Yeah. yeah. It, seems, yeah. it seems that if, uh, if you know crunch time is just the afternoon pickup, yeah. then it would be worth doing some real experimentation as far as getting a little spread in the pickup times. Right. Because mm -hmm. what you're really your problem is that whatever the peak is, okay, I mean, it's like they talk about an electricity. Yep. Yep. Okay, and That's if you cut the peak down, no, just spread that over 10 minutes or an extra five or 10 minutes, then the serious problems can be sort of resolve themselves. Sure. It doesn't like, it's not like if somebody gets free and easy, right. but it goes from being congested and dangerous to congested, but we can deal with it pretty well. And there's, like you were saying, there's some things you can do without expending funds to experiment to say, okay, you know. Right. And I mean, maybe in the end something has to be done, but there's plenty of things we can look at beforehand. Remember, we're talking right now about the hardest kind of change, and that's the human condition. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. All, all the parking in the world, if it was a million parking spots, you'd still have some kind of crunch where, you, would, you know, right. we're, 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 hu we're humans being humans and we do what humans <laughs> so, do. I think if you could work out a, a staggered system, I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah. made it less congested, right. Right. the parents ought to buy in on that. Right. I agree. They can't be happy with. Oh, right, because you get frustrated. Different, you know, do you get there early and wait an extra 10 minutes, or do you end up at the back of a long line? Or, yeah. Oh, you raise a great point. You know, and it's like, I, I think you get probably, if you had, came up with a system that was actually improvement, you'd get some pretty good cooperation. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So when you, when you have your, your dismissal, are the, the school buses go out first? No. So dismissal is at 3 o'clock. Everybody. Um, all elementary schools. All elementary schools in the district have a three o'clock dismissal time. What we find, bus S1 will arrive to Sunderland between 2.55 and three o'clock. And many times it's, it's waiting outside prior to the kids coming out. Yeah. S2 is a different story. And a lot of it depends on who they're bringing home from the high school. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sp uh, sp sports seasons, you know, Particularly bad, yeah. Yeah, particularly the sports seasons. They, you know, sometimes many kids are staying after school and there's fewer students. Or 
they might need to make an extra run or go down a longer stretch of road to drop off one or two students. You think like so at S2 classes. is rarely there at 3 o'clock. Yeah. Usually it's closer to 3.05 or so. So you've got the cars assembled for the normal pickup and then the bus wants to get in. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the economist in me says if you, uh, you know, if you, Added a, um, <laughs> a pickup tax for a trade. that was good. Trade, you'd get a lot more carpooling. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you um, implement that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, right, right before I don't want to be elected. <laughs> right. we'll, put, we'll set you up with a toll booth in right now. Final, uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm just thinking, I mean, if, if, you had, if it was arranged so that those buses were clear, yeah. right? Then, then you have another potential travel lane that you could use, and you could say, okay, for parents of grades one through three, or, or you know, so young students are, but, but if you clear the buses, then then you have then and, and say, okay, all your bus students, and I th I thought I remember that when we were here, it was the the walkers left before the bus or something I, I remember there was, some, there was a difference mm -hmm. the way yeah, walkers we, walkers because the walkers and Joseph and, and Henry were there and I, I would just say then then all of a sudden that you clear you know you clear the walkers or, or you clear the buses then you allow that you hope that whole turnaround becomes open for other other uses you know so you're not you're not excluding so I mean, you could look at that potentially also. Mm -hmm. But now, if you're, if you're holding from 255 to 310, I mean, so you can't use that lane. Right. Correct. A another idea that was thrown out there was switch the um, the roundabout in front of the school with the sp the spaces in front of the flagpole. So have the right, the buses by the have flag. the buses yep. by the flagpole, mm -hmm. and. Yeah. Require all students on S1 and S2, once they come out the front door, whichever door they come out, just to wait in line. And the winter comes along. And, and then when it's time to board the bus, crosswalk, a uh, staff member with a vest and a stop sign Walks takes that entire group across and they go right to the bus. And having, um, then, then, allow, then that would allow the, a pull through lane in front of the school with, with the cars. Safe routes to school recommends that students get off their bus and step foot onto the sidewalk and then school. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what is just and I, I would agree with that. Right. And that, but but if you had all so if you held your school kids or if you held the bus students back mm -hmm. for five minutes, um and, and you you kept your buses from parking inside of there. Maybe you could maybe you could do that also, mm -hmm. or have the buses unload first. I, I mean, I mean, it's a great uh, project for some. Our sixth grade engineers. Oh, I'm I'm thinking uh, eleventh <laughs> twelfth grade eleventh twelfth grade class at Frontier under the careful tutelage of uh, some <laughs> physics and uh, math and some English teachers so that we can get the correct wording on sign, signage, but... Apply fluid dynamics to it somehow? Well, if it's raining, fluid dynamics would help. <laughs> Cap and trade. Yeah. The, the, Here you go. <laughs> Peak I know, pricing I know we don't want, I know right. we don't want civil engineers on it, because if you put civil engineers <laughs> on it, we'll have bulldozers, excavators, and we'll be digging, so... Hey, hey, one other thing we tried a couple, a couple years ago. We had it. Our staff fill up this back row first, mm -hmm. and then start. This is in the morning for parking, and then start mm -hmm. parking from here. They're back this way to allow these spaces. Leave that open. But then that caused a huge congestion right there, here, right in that one spot. So, um, you know, actually along your lines, Doug, mm -hmm. it's sort of along the cap and trade line. You could also have it that if you want to come in, you have to volunteer for a school event or something like that to be able to pull in there with your car. That might work too. Get a little bit, get some more carpooling going. Yeah. At, at a yeah. Again, it'll get me unelected, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's an access to one goal. Around, 
no way to uh, maybe staff parking or if even the buses can go there, turn around in the, the oh, you have driveway to, to, to the, the back to the solar panel area and then they can, the buses could stage on that side and anybody riding buses could exit the school that way. I'm just wondering if there's any way to u utilize the, the, the road one around the side. Fire road. Hmm. But I don't know how what the so fire turn around. Turn around. Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, we, the, the buses would be able to turn around there. We, we have um, tractor trailer trucks yeah, delivered trucks, goods right. to the cafeteria, yeah. you know, on a weekly basis. Um, it, it would not be possible to have it be a complete loop right now because it's a three inch sidewalk eventually. And that, you know, that does not, could not withstand vehicle traffic. Um, but that's another outside the box idea as well. So I'm interesting. Thank you for that. I'm proposing that um, I come back at a later date with some some definites, like the crosswalk signs and replacing some other signs, and then we can give you an update. and And maybe we try at some point, late May, early June, the the staggered dismissal, and to see how that works. Okay. Um, so great. Well, thanks for the update. Yeah. We'll put Any other questions on that? Or? I, I think George should be able to take yeah. care of this, the mm -hmm. signage, striping, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. Painting, paint line painting, and signage. That's not a that's not a difficult thing. But yeah. And d does it make sense to add a an additional crosswalk? And um, I, I think you should have a. I personally, I think you should have a sidewalk wherever. You have sidewalks leading into anything. A crosswalk, mm. where they have to tie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. So no, you have right. A, so you, if you have a yeah. sidewalk with... I mean, that north side of the South Island. Right here. Yeah, there, and then right across the way yeah. on the east side. Yeah. All your key spots were <coughs> cutting across. And, that, and that's why I mentioned <coughs> one, four or two yeah. crosswalks, yeah. depending, and it was that, those locations. Makes perfect sense. But I also, I also know that people... Um, will always take the shortest distance between two Straight points. Yeah. And I, I know if you ever go to the university, the, the smartest design people, they they don't put crosswalks or sidewalks in until, right, until they watch the they, they, they give it a year and they watch where the yep. people use, and it's amazing where mm -hmm. people go. If, if we had, if we used that logic, we'd be at another 20. Right now, yeah. Uh, hey, <laughs> you know, and I, I've listened to I've listened to civils talk about you put an 18 inch 18 inch hump, and and most people won't step over an 18 inch hump. They'll walk around an 18 inch hump. I don't know how they come up with that number, but that's what they say, and they try it, and it works. You know, if you had six inches, we'll walk over. Twelve inches, walk over. Eighteen inches, they won't. Have you walk tried over. humps? <laughs> we have, we haven't. <laughs> but there so. there used to be speed bumps on. Yes, there were. Until See, and the problems yeah. all started when we took those speed bumps I know, out. Right? They were killer speed bumps. Too. They, they were, yeah, they were a little excessive. Well, those, were, those were speed mountains. Yeah. Those, <laughs> they were. those were. Were they 18 inches? Uh, no, almost. They, were they might have been. Yeah. yeah, they were. You didn't want I, to be sitting got, in the back of the bus. Let's put it that we, way. We, we actually <coughs> rarely have an issue with cars traveling too fast on Swampfield Drive. The visitors do a pretty good job. Mm in the speed limit say what's the congestion kind of solves that problem too. yes it does yeah <laughs> naturally all right thank you gary could i ask you to hit the light switch there thanks so much <sighs> now we can see you again i know i did <laughs> <laughs> thank you on to our other topic about the the maya so i call our meeting to order yeah yeah so called uh, Sunderland Elementary School Committee meeting to order. Um, 30, 720, 19. Yep, that works. Um, all right, so, so I gather we need to be signees to this. Um, and does it, 
Are there contractual <coughs> requirements as well? Uh, Maybe the 101 about the MOA, the statute, the yeah. MOA, and, and the actual purpose of, the, of tonight? Yeah, uh, so the town voted to adopt chapter 21 through 22, which allowed us to um, look at other health insurance plans and to negotiate with the unions. Right. Um, David met last week. Yes, last Tuesday. Brad Brusso from the Mass Teachers Association. Um, and I believe we are ready to sign the agreements. Okay, there's so the teachers there. The because the agreements with the school, so will the, will, they need to, will the union then? They'll be signing off too. So the selectmen, the school committee, and the union rep will all sign we'll off. all sign it. And then it becomes official. Yeah, yeah the, the rollover process begins. So right. none, of this, none of this happens until right. July 1st. But, it, but just now signing it, I mean, obviously, if the union doesn't sign it, then. No, correct. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. Then they know the deadlines. Okay. So the memorandum of understanding is again only for the trans only for the change in the in the uh, covering engine. There's no coverage changes. Right. right. And the town is picking up an additional five percent contribution. I mean, you know, really, as far from my perspective, I mean, it's not affecting my coverage. It's their coverage. So if you know, I mean, I, I think um, if the union is good with it. You, know, you guys obviously are good with it. I'm, I'm, uh, there's I mean, we're, we got to do this to move forward. Correct. There's any other questions right. or concerns? We have to give 60 day notice. Yeah, we have to notify them by and May 1st. We right. need to be able to start making the, yeah, doing the paperwork to get right. the upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of all the back office work happens starting May 2nd. Right, right. And all the channels. This is just an enabling kind of. Yep. So, I think we just need to. All right, it. yeah. So, uh, do we need a motion? Or are we yeah, presumably. I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, agree with the, um, this memorandum of agreement and uh, sign it. Right. <coughs> Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Is the signature by yeah. chair? Yep. Yeah. Right. Then, Mayor Selectman, I'll move, move to enter and move our health insurance uh, to uh, my coverage as, as has been presented. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do we now? Yep. 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 Oh. Um, <laughs> two copies here. And the teachers and one of the is. I know it's relatively short notice and a quick posting, but I want to thank the school committee and thank administration you. and the union for looking at this and going, oh, let's do that. <laughs> so it's nice everybody was growing in the right direction. And you know, I. I, from my perspective, it helps having Sherry here yeah. so much got her act together that when it was a question of, okay, how are we going to do this? It was like, yeah, let's just get together Monday night and take care of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we're trying to be sensible about these mm -hmm. things. That's right. It was one of those rare conferences of timing where we could actually change and get an extra 5% of the those, yeah. those things don't happen. Right. Yeah, so we got, it was nice. So let us know when we're back at that. Okay, we're back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Brief announcement for our sponsors. <laughs> nice. Good evening, Matt. Long time no see. It's been uh, just a uh, couple of days. 
Um, uh, wanted to stop in. I sent a letter a few weeks back uh, about the upcoming Brookshire's to Boston tour, which, um, as we've done for the last several years, um, would come into Sunderland on Thursday, September 13th. Um, we would set up our encampment uh, in the back um, here on the ball field, and um, uh, um, we then do dinner over at the um, uh, church, over at the chapel, the Bums Barbecue um, caters that, and we also send quite a few rhymes over the, um, uh, the various other restaurants, but the, uh, the bridge side seems to be a popular destination for a lot of our They put margaritas by the yeah. side. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so they do pretty well that night. We then do breakfast um, there at uh, Bridgeside on uh, uh, Friday morning as riders start heading out of town and heading back off to, uh, um, on the way up to Devon, it's a 78 mile day at that. Uh, that day, so uh, it's a bit of a beast of the day. Uh, folks generally begin arriving um, here in Sunderland on Thursday around oh, noontime, one o'clock. Um, our shower truck um, and our um, luggage truck and um, various staff, uh, including myself, um, usually are here by about uh, somewhere 10.30 to 11 o'clock. And so camp begins getting um, built on that Thursday um, around that point. And, um, uh, and then um, folks are here uh, throughout the evening with a bunch of individual tents um, out there. And um, uh, usually it's, uh, even at that time of year, it's a little cool at night. Folks are typically in bed pretty early. and. So, so um, uh, I won't say that that uh, Billy's Beverages doesn't do any business. Yeah. <laughs> it does do a little bit of business, um, but I, I think we really tried to police the area and make sure that um, that the restrooms are clean, that the uh, the trash is picked up, and that we're hauling all that stuff out. Um, and um, and things are left generally better than uh, than the way uh, we found it. So. Um, you know, we, we've been doing this now for a few years. We did not do it in 2017. We took a, a break, and in fact, this will be our, our final year for doing Burks Years to Boston. Um, and that's just because um, I need to retire again. Yeah. I've got uh, <laughs> grandchildren on the way, and the horizon, and, and um, Rain retiring next year. And, and so I feel like, okay, I need to begin to slow things down a little bit. Um, there is another organization, actually, uh, uh, Adventure Cycling, who is interested in picking up this tour and, and doing it. And Sunderland is just the ideal location for that first night um, off the road. And I would strongly encourage them to uh, uh, have a conversation with you on into the future for that. I would really be, love to see the, uh, the tour continue. Um, I just don't want to be responsible for uh, uh, being the one who, uh, who has to do it. So, um, you know, we've done this a, a number of times. Uh, you know, we try to coordinate with the fire department, police department, um, water department. There's typically a $50 fee for use of water, which um, the shower truck um, requires. So we, we, um, so we pay that um, to, uh, to walk the water department. And um, other than that, I don't think there's really been any um, any particular issues. And I think it's a, a real nice way to be able to introduce people to town and and um, um, sp spend a significant amount of money with local businesses. And, and um, so it seems to have worked out well for uh, for the last few years. Yeah, it's a river pathway. And there'll now be a little uh, pathway, mm -hmm. not so much this year, yeah, sure. though, yeah. um, and certainly on into the future. But um, yeah, I think it, uh, um, it, the place just keeps getting better and better. It's just a ton of experience. Coordination is really the only driving point. It's been, it's been a, a joy to work with your organization and these and other events. but. 
bittersweet it is the last, I guess I would say. So are you looking for a uh, um, recommendation here? Motion to support the Berkshire uh, Boston High School for the Stockings on Thursday, September 13th. Oh, second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And probably the only um, piece of coordination is making sure that there is not um, soccer practice um, scheduled at this point. And, and I know there have been some discussion about resting that field at mm -hmm. some point. I wasn't sure whether that was this year that that was going to be attempted. Uh, I'm yeah. not sure where I had. It was money appropriated at the town meeting yeah. that is part of the capital budget to uh, re treat and receive the fields, but yeah. other than the appropriation, we just have to work on what that means for the schedule. Yeah. There's a lot of activity out there, and maybe, yeah. maybe it's yeah, the right. end of the normal season that happens. It, exactly. Yeah. That seems like yes. a better time for planting anyway, well, exactly. as opposed to September 13th. Right. So. right. Well, we'll, we'll make sure it won't happen on that date. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. Um, good. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and you know, we on. can, we all know how to get in touch with each other, certainly be happy to um, um, coordinate with other town officials and and uh, any concerns you've got, you know where to reach us. Perfect. We'll miss the annual presentation. Mm -hmm. right. Are they doing a celebration for you? Oh, I don't know what will happen. <laughs> um, so, all right. Thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you. I'll second the motion on the minutes. I'll in favor of the minutes of 423.18. All right. Hi. Uh, let's see. Uh, board of select updates. Uh, I know it was, it was a quiet week last week. We have uh, the Board of Oversight met last Thursday. Um, it, uh, we appropriated money to outfit the new home for the South County EMS. Um, I believe South County EMS is is going to actually move on May 20th, May 21st, May 14th, sometime in that time frame. So probably the next two, two, two and a half weeks we'll be moving into the new building. I guess Deerfield Academy will be turning it over to the uh, town of Deerfield, and there's going to be an open house there on May 26th, but we'll get more news um, as that comes closer to, to time. That's good. I'd also like to uh, um, thank Bob Doobie for 27 interesting years as moderator. Um, <laughs> And, and, it, and it's funny, we, we do do a lot of work prepping for meetings, and we never quite know what articles will, will drive the most conversation. So um, I just like to thank the uh, 300th um, town meeting in the town of Sunderland because you kept a record alive because I had no idea that we would have had so much conversations about one article that... And, uh, but I guess that's if you're a town student of town meetings, that's why you go. Yeah. Absolutely right. Does anybody have a Keep discussion about whether the town would spend a hundred dollars to support the Memorial Day parade? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. One point, and that one happened. <coughs> <long time. laughs> I uh, again, we now? we you know we we try um, <clears throat> to predict because the moderator. I, I would say in the last uh, maybe 10 years or so, the, the warrant, how it was laid out and when the articles were presented was pretty much um, the selectmen just kind of put things wherever. And sometimes they made sense and sometimes they didn't. Um, but the moderator in the last, uh, I would say the last 10 years or so has been much more involved with the placement of articles on the warrant um, to try to make a flow make a flow of the town meeting um, but sometimes there's always that flow gets 
diverted. So it's it's interesting. But yeah, we, we can our, we can we can we can discuss anything in our town. Yes, we can. But I, w I would like to thank everybody that showed, the 126 people that showed up. I would like to thank them because it was because uh, without you guys showing up, I mean, we don't we don't get the work done. So and and is the and may people may think it's boring and not productive, but it's just we have to do it. Nobody ever said democracy is always exciting. You know? No. <laughs> Good point. I didn't chuckle. Well, it makes me chuckle a few times, so I think it is. The greatest thing, of actually, to be in a town with town mm -hmm. meeting, I mean, the ultimate, you know, democracy. You, you go to other parts of the country and they go, how does that work? Yeah. We, uh, we're still working. Yeah, we're, we're still working. We don't really it. know. But <laughs> 100 years later. Yeah. We are human beings, so we're right. right. We talk about that earlier. Right. It's going to be imperfect. It should be. But I, I would like to add that the, our attorney, uh, David Jenkins, is... Um, from the Boston area, and he comes out because he totally enjoys our town meeting. The way the way the people speak, and it's it's a in a respectful manner, and the questions that are asked, and and the flow. I mean, I'm surprised. I mean, he's a partner. He's you know he's a partner in that law firm, and they usually assign town meetings to um, new attorneys fresh out of college. Um, law school, and he still comes to ours. So He's not I, I think it's, college. I think it speaks volumes of the of the people that 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 come to our town meeting. So I'd like to thank you for that, all those for that. I agree, and hopefully the pre meeting helps a little bit too. So I'd be curious to see like feedback on that, and you know maybe what helped, what didn't, what was Smart. maybe change going forward. And, you know, maybe we can you know some new graphics or something like that if that helps during the meeting. You know. So, I can say from the school committee's perspective, if nothing else, it helped us get ourselves organized in terms of what we felt like was, um, you know, most important to present mm -hmm. uh, um, in advance. And I thought I think Peter uh, talked about it uh, extremely well, mm -hmm. and um, so. Or you get like preliminary feedback on what from you're that, exactly you might be. exactly yep. so from that perspective alone I mean you know it'd be great to get more of a turnout of that but if nothing else kind of helps us get give some um, um, thought in terms of what we want to say and then what resonates in that open house helps us think more because again I think it's you know staying to your point in the town meeting and not getting too off on right off the track uh, is important too and so yeah, hopefully it helps clear up questions, that, you know, because maybe people hear rumors about, oh, you know, I heard such and such, but then when you get in there, and then you can see, like, some actual data. And, yeah. In fact, when that helps to clear up questions, too. So. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, thank you, Sherry, and all, and all, okay. the, all the folks who were yeah. participating. You had a good description of it, kind of looking like a trade show. Yeah, it looked like yeah. a trade show. It was a great trade show of information. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we talked about maybe getting food involved somehow. That always tends to bring more people out, so, you know, that never hurts. So I'm going to do that for next year. We're told by the chair of the Finance Committee, as long as next year happens and there's blueberry cake, it's fine. Blueberry cake was a hit. There you go. Right. So if I could, Mr. Chair, there was, uh, last Thursday there was a meeting in this room with the developer for the 120 North Main Street project, RDI, uh, and they had, I, I would say the room was substantially full and uh, there are a butters and the dialogue was respectful there were good questions asked about parking about setbacks about heights and RDI did a very good job with their um, answers to the questions the kind of tones to the answers and also we're left with some homework so that's a good thing tomorrow night Conservation Commission is getting the first pass to look at the um, 120 North Main Street project as well. So tomorrow night's meeting, CONCOM, is worth people who are interested to come down and pay attention to that. Uh, I understand that's also gonna be the unveiling of, potentially the unveiling of the Sugarbush Meadows version, whatever we're on. Yeah. So okay. see if that's for real. And this Thursday coming up is a Frontier Capital <coughs> Working Group meeting at the, at the school as well. So, and I'll echo the points about town meeting. Those people who participated, um, and to a lesser extent, the, uh, 
but also thank the people who are actually going to spend a little time and watch it on TV, even though you we weren't there. I mean, it's amazing how much of the information still gets conveyed either through FCAT's coverage or pre-meeting coverage from these meetings. Um, town meeting is, well, it's a special thing. I shouldn't take it for granted. Something not to be missed. <clears throat> Public comment? Yeah. I came only to say what Bob Dewey said so well, and so I didn't bother saying it at that point, but that was the only reason I came and say that sometimes I don't always agree with you fellows, as you might remember from a recent, a recent email or two. Yep. <laughs> but I, I definitely admire, <clears throat> admire the effort you guys put in and you know, the town shows up for three hours and you guys are here 300 hours or whatever it is. So, anyway, so I just came to say what Bob Dewey said and now I'll leave you alone. Well, other than I hear the stop lines. Thank you. My driver is here. So <laughs> and you know, contrary to what people might believe, we don't always agree with each other either. So, yeah, that's, that's the fun part. Right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. The, um, I don't know. That's probably all right. Yeah. The stuff that's, you know, <laughs> right. have enough going on. Um, okay. um, all right. Then we'll slide on to our next topic, which is um, regarding the appointment of the Housing Committee and CPC Housing Rep. Uh, this is from Peter Jessup to the town regarding the Housing Committee and the CPC to the Select Board. I'm interested in serving on the Housing Committee and then to represent the Housing Committee on the CPC. <coughs> I have some experience with both types of these committees during my previous residency in Amherst. Please let me know if you need any more information. And that was from Peter Jessup. Thank you. Uh, motion. Oh, second to appoint for the, for the uh, current appointment cycle. And that process is going to come soon. <laughs> the annual appointments. Uh, is that for both positions that you? It would be for both. Okay. Yes. Well, no, because he has to go to the housing committee and he has to be. Right. He has to be uh, recommended by the housing committee. Because they're rep. Yeah. Because he would be their rep. Although I know that the housing committee does not have a rep on the I'm CPC at the right. present time. That's correct. Yeah. And that's important given that that's one of the three pillars of right. what CPC is about. So that's Correct. important. Yeah. All right. Was that a second? That was a second. Okay. Yep. All those in favor? All. Aye. Aye. All right. So three to zero on that one. And then we have an email from Mary Ellen Ahern regarding the Veterans Memorial signs and format. And. Um, They've been working essentially on the format of the signs for, and this was, I don't remember the exact time, but this was, it was a little while back. Where we, mm -hmm. um, and if you drive through Deerfield, you can see where they have the additions of the signs on top of the street signs for the veterans. Um, it says, I've been working with, on a project with Bobby that discussed with us selecting during a meeting over a year ago. And we're going to have signs made to attach to the top of the street signs with the name of Sunderland's military, who were killed in action during times of conflict. When we're able, the signs will be placed near the street that these men lived on. If there are multiple names for one street, we will need to decide on where to place the sign. And uh, George, our highway uh, department head, is aware of the project. And uh, Wendy Houle and Linda Lepaka and Dan Van Dalsen have helped to create the list in the current format. And then they've attached a list of the format. So it's essentially you're going to have the rank, if applicable, and the name the branch of the military that they were in, the conflict that they were in, and then the killed in action date underneath it. So, it's a nice, um, a nice, a really a nice addition to the, to the street signs. I don't think we need to take any formal action at the moment on this, right? This is more of a... Approval of the format? Yeah. Unless you want to... No, it, uh, and, and I, I would just, the only thing I will add is that um, I, I believe 
through their research, they've actually found another Sunderland resident that oh, was, yeah. I believe. So. That's nice. so we'll have to, another name maybe to add to the wall probably then, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a motion on the format. Um, move to accept the format as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And thanks for uh, all you guys for doing that work on that. It's a, quite a bit of work to get all that coordinated. Right? That's for sure. <clears throat> and I don't see any other official items on our agenda today. Sherry said we'd be here till nine. Wow. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. We can have <laughs> some other. I'm so content. So we just before that we have a couple other important dates to remember. We've got our town election Saturday, May fifth. That's this coming Saturday. And the times on that are, um, do we remember what the time slots? I believe it's 8 to 3. I think it's 8 to 3. Yeah, I know it ended at 3. I just couldn't remember the start time. So that's 8 in the morning. So regardless of what position you stand, please vote one way or the other. Because it's sad to say the, our country has probably the lowest rates of voters, voter turnout of all the democracies on the entire planet. So for all the work that we do, uh, we have terrible turnout. So um, I think that's important because we can't really sit around and complain unless we get involved somehow. And voting is probably the simplest and least commitment for somebody in a democracy. So, uh, Well, I would just disagree with Dave a little bit because we always can sit around and complain. Well, that's we true. Can't, we can. can't make a pot. We can't make a change <laughs> if, we, if we just sit on our hands or That's and right. not going to vote. So, if if you uh, if you want to if you want to participate and make a change in your community, then you should vote. Yeah. Because you you do make a difference, and and you make a difference by voting. <clears throat> and is it, I was talking to my daughter the other night, and 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 um, she was talking about this uh, person that she knows that was sixty something years old and. And she only voted once, and and when daughter asked why, she says, "Well, my mom always told me her vote and my vote would cancel one another's out." So, um, I, I would say if you if you looked at yeah. if you looked at our um, some recent elections, and I'm not talking local, I'm talking you know um, congressional, presidential. Um, your vote does matter. Absolutely. You're right. The result was influenced basically by people not showing up at the polls. Right. That's really, you know, whatever the direction is, that's, that's very important. So I, I, would, I would say make, make, make a difference and, and make an effort come out and vote. Agreed. All of our information regarding the budget and the handouts at school and the uh, town meeting are all still online everything's been updated and it's online i put so the debt so schedule please, up today you know, so yeah, and please take take a look at that information that's online uh, it's, it's all of the handouts plus that we're at town hall at uh, town meeting and if it helps inform your position beautiful and if you have questions email us right. we're always, <coughs> always willing to answer some questions so uh we have a motion to adjourn motion second all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.